The suit is literal perfection. No, 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 no. It will be. When it fits a woman. <laughs> Nerderotic.com. It's a beautiful day on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. Batwoman Season 2 has premiered, and YouTubers are rejoicing everywhere. I don't think anybody really watches this show to watch it. I think we watch it just so we can re-watch it and stay caught up with EFAP. Hail Mauler, hail Rags, hail Az, and everybody over there. Now, we can't get into a Batwoman review before we acknowledge the passing of Ruby Rose. No, she hasn't died. She quit. And the beautiful irony of a show whose entire premise was that a woman took over for a Bruce Wayne that quit and she did his job better. And then that woman in real life quits the show because superhero TV is hard. Batwoman season one had a 13% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes and currently it's at 36% and the critic score is at 83% exposing five out of those six critics as absolute shills including Grace Randolph who says so totally in line with the other Arrowverse shows which have an audience okay is that a compliment that people are still watching this show I guess Javisha Leslie is a great find who makes Batwoman her own, a welcome new member to DC's Bat family. We have a quick update through the magic of editing, and since last night when I started recording this video and continued this morning, now we're at a 30% audience score. And the ratings came in last night, and as expected, they were spectacularly bad. A drop of 65%, 663,000 whole people in the United States of America watched this show last night in a country of 331 million people, and in that key, 18 to 49 demo, you know, the people who actually buy stuff, it was a 0 0.10, meaning out of that 663,000, only 183,000 of them were between the ages of 18 and 49, meaning there's a bunch of old dudes watching Batwoman. We'll get back to Rotten Tomatoes in just a moment. And yes, we are going to go over this episode very briefly, and we're just going to focus on Ryan Wilder. Yes, it's a CW show. The rest of it is feelings in hallways, feelings in offices, feelings on staircases. So what do you do when your lead actress quits the show and you have to introduce a new character, Ryan Wilder? Do we spend the episode showing training montages? Maybe her spending a few episodes becoming Batwoman? No, we instantly make her a superhero because apparently all it takes is putting on a costume and you spend the entire episode emulating the quitter. So let's get into this and get this over with as quick as possible. I just reviewed Star Trek Discovery and quite frankly, my brain still hurts, but that show has some similarities with this show. Both are unintentionally hilarious, and they both have black female leads with male first names. So that intersectional box is ticked already. So we see Ryan Wilder in her late 60s Ford van sleeping, and she's having a dream about her and her mom moving into a shitty apartment. We find out immediately that she is a lesbian. Another box is ticked. Then a plane explodes above her van. She runs out, saves a homeless guy. Then she finds the Batwoman costume. Doesn't bother looking for any other bodies. Sounds like superhero material to me. Stop. By the way, not that it matters, this episode is called What Happened to Kate Kane? Spoilers, she quit. Now, right away, we see the biggest difference between Ruby Rose and Javisha Leslie. Aside from the obvious, Javisha can emote. She can do things with her face, like smile to make it look like she's trying to act. I'm not saying she's a great actress because she's not. She's awful in this, but it looks like she might be able to act someday. We know Ruby Rose will never be able to do that. Greg Berlanti and the male intersectional feminist writing staff for the show don't waste any time showing what kind of bigots they really are. Do you think they do something a little different with their black female lead, Javisha Leslie, playing Ryan Wilder? Do they maybe show her as a lawyer or as a doctor? Or do they have her living in a van, talking to a plant, having been to prison down by the river? And I live in a van down by the river. The police finally show up and start looking for the bodies, even the ones that Ryan Wilder stopped looking for. We also see Alice somehow showed up there. Maybe she Ubered. And Doug Ray Scott 
shows up and he was able to look pretty convincing being sad and distraught, but I'm pretty sure he was just drawing on his true sadness of missing that Wolverine role and ending up in this show. Mini Fox is Tommy Elliot, as Bruce Wayne calls him, and Lucy are at the Batcave and they figure out that the plane that went down was Kate Kane's. They also figure out that the Batwoman costume is missing. By the way, this is all in like the first three minutes of the show. And then before we cut to our first commercial, we see Tommy Elliott return as Bruce Wayne. So Through a series of flashbacks and a conversation with the social worker that take up about two minutes of screen time, we find out that Ryan Wilder had indeed been to prison for possessing drugs that weren't hers, but she was still in possession of them, so she still broke the law. So Minnie Fox and Lucy are looking for Kate Kane, and while they are doing that, Ryan Wilder decides to play superhero, and we get our big moment where she dons her Batwoman costume, and where does she put it on? In a nasty public bathroom. Once Ryan Wilder dons the Batwoman costume, she instantly knows how to use it. They put in some minimal effort trying to have her fumble around with a couple of things, but that was about 30 seconds. She runs across two white guys with masks in an alley doing drugs beats the crap out of them and says she's looking for information because she's on a mission to avenge her mother turns out her mother was killed when they walked into that shitty apartment i was talking about earlier there were some squatters there and they just so happened to be in alice's gang who's alice she's the big bad in this series just in case you don't watch this show now, the MacGuffin in this week's episode is a kryptonite bullet, and the bad guy is Tommy Elliott with Bruce Wayne face. Now, the reason Kate Kane was on a plane that ended up crashing that she died in, but they won't say she died in in the first place, was to take that kryptonite bullet to National City to get rid of it. Now, the kryptonite bullet is apparently the only thing that can pierce the bat suit because it's derived from Superman. I'm not really sure. Kryptonite's just a piece of Krypton, and none of this really matters. It turns out Tommy Elliott as Bruce Wayne wants to be Batman, and there's one thing missing. The Batman costume that Batwoman is wearing. I'm not sure how that's going to fit him, but he really needs it. So Logic has no place in Batwoman, so I don't know why I'm bothering to waste my breath to point out that whether you're a dude or a woman, you can't just become Bruce Wayne. He was a very unique individual who trained for years to achieve the peak human condition and become the world's greatest detective. You can't just put on his clothes and be him. But apparently in this show, you can. So Javisa Leslie's Ryan Wilder has her big superhero moment once Minnie Fox and Lucy catch up with her because the Batwoman costume has a GPS. She tells Minnie Fox and Lucy she's not going to give up her costume until she finds the killer of her mother. And throughout the episode, Minnie Fox and Lucy and Ryan Wilder have mutual admiration. They look into each other's background. Ryan Wilder reads up about Kate Kane and realizes she's a hero, so she decides to give up the costume and hit the GPS device. That's how Tommy Elliott as Bruce Wayne can find him, and we're just going to fast forward right to the end. There's a big car chase between a late 60s van and the Batmobile. And the late 60s van outruns it and dodges missiles. So and the whole point of putting Bruce Wayne's face on Tommy Elliott originally was to have Kate Kane beat the crap out of Bruce Wayne. But instead, we get Ryan Wilder beating the crap out of Bruce Wayne. How's that for symbolism? Our hero, Tommy Elliott, did shoot Ryan Wilder with the kryptonite bullet, which didn't kill her, but it's festering somehow and it'll probably give her superpowers. She gives back the costume, but she has a lot of admiration for Kate Kane and Lucy and Minnie Fox have a lot of admiration for her. And we also had other characters that I didn't talk about at all because it was just basically feelings in apartments, feelings in hallways, feelings on staircases, and feelings right next to the bat signal. Doug Ray Scott's character, Jacob, finally finds out his daughter was Batwoman at after she died, and Alice reminded him that she died knowing that her father hated her. Men suck. I understand this show isn't made for me. I understand this show is low-hanging fruit. I understand it's made for tweens. Unfortunately, they're not watching this show. Speaking of low-hanging fruit, let's go to Rotten Tomatoes and see what the audience has to say. Keegan M with five stars 11 minutes ago says best episode ever. Good show, good acting and good actors and actresses. Choice everything was epic. WTF worst writing ever. She literally is living in a van down by the river and a plane lands 10 feet away, crashes actually, giving her the power to put on a suit and know how to use it seriously. Not even a stupid montage. She 
literally puts on the bat suit and then Batmans her way through fights. Just horrible writing, so lazy, and clearly they care more about how the show looks and virtue signaling than by the content of their character. Literally the worst thing I have ever seen for any TV show in my life. Well, you haven't seen Star Trek Discovery, probably. Please cancel this show, thanks. Well, in a normal world, this would be canceled, but virtue signaling has a lot of power and capital in Hollywood. They don't care about money anymore. Watching this show, I could only think of whether or not the producers made her prove she was bisexual before giving her the role. They announced before casting they would only hire a non-straight woman of color, despite that being horribly problematic genderizing is genderizing a word what about trans non-binary gender queer or gender mood fluid yes that's a real thing thanks npr and if so how did she have to prove her lgbt iaq plus bona fides that is a good question matt f so yes this episode was absolutely terrible the acting was awful the writing was atrocious and the music felt like pencils being jammed to my ear and it really doesn't get much more woke or intersectional than this that being said i did have quite a few chuckles in this one especially when Minnie fox was able to hack the batmobile that he didn't even know was in the bat cave for the entirety of season one listen this isn't the last jedi this isn't Doctor Who, The Timeless Children. This isn't all of Star Trek Discovery and Picard. It's not doing any damage to the Batman brand. That has already been done by DC Comics and Tom King. But this show does personify Hollywood in the last few years, and it might hurt Javisha Leslie's career. Just look at her. The costume does her no favors. And it might hurt her career like it hurt Ruby Rose, who couldn't wait to get out of this situation, just like most of the people who originally watched this show. Nerderotic.com. Please subscribe. So! If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, thank you for listening this long. I will see you in the next video.